the next part of the chapter is chemical equations and calculations chemical equations and calculations or sometimes you can also take chemical reactions chemical reactions cut so here I repeat the chapter deals with chemical equations and calculations and chemical reactions here the fundamental terminology involved is that is a chemical change chemical change chemical change then uh, chemical equation a chemical change and a chemical equation this chemical change and chemical equation what do you mean by chemical change the process process which is physical okay when, when you say chemical change uh, if you take not physical you can take the process which involves conversion conversion of conversion of reactants conversion of one substance conversion of reactants or else you can just put it in like this conversion of reactants to products conversion of reactants to products is simply a chemical change and this conversion of uh, uh, reactants to products actually involve because of a chemical reaction because of chemical reaction it, it, it involves the conversion of reactants to products because of chemical reaction so a chemical reaction involves a chemical equation when you say a chemical equation a chemical equation is made up of uh, yeah of course we have reactants we have reactants separated by products separated by products reactants separated by products so if you take a chemical equation so therefore if you go for a chemical equation reactants are reactants and products are separated by the arrow we have a right side arrow and we have a tail this we call it as tail and this we call it as the head head is faced by products and tail is faced by reactants so what is happening here is this what is the information a, a chemical equation involves the two components a chemical equation is given by two components reactants and products a chemical equation is given by two components reactants and products separated by an arrow an arrow is made up of head and tail and what information we can gather that is from the chemical equation during the chemical reaction in the form of chemical equation what information we can gather we can gather all the information from the uh, chemical equation from reactants to products that is this chemical equation is basically based on based on the type of chemical reaction based on the type of chemical reaction we can take we can take here that is a suppose if you are simply taking chemical combination say i am taking chemical combination what information you can gather from chemical combination suppose for example you take carbon solid reacts with o2 gas gives rise to carbon dioxide gas that means one element and one molecule carbon is a solid 
oxygen is a gas and carbon dioxide is a molecule again that means what information we can gather one mole of carbon solid one mole of carbon solid reacts with one mole of O2 gas O2 gas one mole of O2 gas giving rise to one mole of carbon dioxide gas this is the this is the information which you can gather from the chemical combination suppose you are taking chemical decomposition chemical decomposition if you are taking chemical decomposition and mind you here carbon solid and oxygen gas these two are reactants and uh, carbon oxide is a product it's a product so similarly in the chemical decomposition suppose i am taking ca co3 solid limestone calcium carbonate upon heating you heat it you get carbon dioxide gas plus calcium oxide solid that means here calcium carbonate is a reactant and carbon dioxide and calcium oxide are products reactants and products are separated by the arrow where in which calcium carbonate is a solid and carbon dioxide and calcium oxide carbon dioxide is a gas molecule and calcium oxide is a solid uh, molecule and uh, here calcium carbonate is reactant and uh, carbon dioxide and calcium oxide are products so in this way we can gather the information from the given chemical reaction as long as the chemical process is continued so the next type of chemical equation you can take we have studied about in the previous chart we have studied about the chemical combination we have studied the chemical decomposition sometimes you can even go for chemical displacement chemical displacement if you go for chemical displacement suppose for example uh, you are taking zinc uh, is a solid and it reacts with h2so4 h2so4 liquid it gives rise to zinc sulfate zinc sulfate liquid plus h2 gas so what you are noticing here is the sulfuric acid this is acid and this is metal metal is coming and replacing the hydrogen gas h2 gas okay from the acid so you are getting zinc sulfate as a salt and this is a gas this is a sort of chemical displacement so what information you can gather from this this is a chemical displacement here solid is reacting with liquid solid reacts with liquid liquid is acid solid is metal giving rise to again it gives solid plus a gas is obtained this is the information we can gather from chemical displacement sometimes we can take um, combustion reaction combustion reaction if you go for combustion reaction suppose i am taking ch4 gas plus oxygen gas gives rise to carbon dioxide gas plus h2o liquid plus energy plus energy because all combustion reactions are exothermic exothermic in nature they release energy so balance the equation we can take two molecules here two we can take two here here that means from the equation this is 1 and this is 1 so here 1 comma 2 comma 1 and again 2 in chemical equation are called molar coefficients molar coefficients so when you, if you want to balance the equation if you want to balance the given equation you have to adjust the balance adjust the balancing of equation through molar 
coefficients. You can you can balance the equation only through the adjustments of you can balance the equation only through the adjustments of molar coefficients. That means you can take one mole of methane, one mole of methane that, that is methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So after formation of carbon dioxide and water, you have to check how many number of oxygens are present and how many number of hydrogens are present. If you take oxygens, we have only two oxygens, so that's why to see that the number of oxygens are same in the reactants and products, we are multiplying that one mole of oxygen molecule with two. And similarly here also, because we have four hydrogens in methane, we are taking two, multiplying the water molecule with two as a molar coefficient. So two twos are four hydrogens. Here also four hydrogens. Here we have two oxygens plus two oxygens, four oxygens, and here also we have two twos are four oxygens and one carbon and one carbon. So the entire reaction has been balanced. So that means from a given chemical reaction or a chemical equation, we can gather the information about we can gather the information about the molar coefficients. We can gather the information about the physical states, physical states of reacting. Reacting atoms or molecules, atoms or molecules. These reacting atoms or molecules can be, they can be reactants or they can be reactants or they can be products. This is the information we can gather. So, like this, we can take as many number of examples. One more last example I am going to give. That is, you can take uh, sometimes you can take uh, double displacement reaction. Also, you can take if you take double displacement double displacement reaction, silver nitrate when it reacts with the barium chloride silver nitrate when it reacts with barium chloride you find that you get silver chloride plus barium nitrate that means what is happening here the chloride ion is being replaced by the nitrate group and the chloro group is replaced by the nitrate group the chloro group is occupying the nitrate group and uh, the nitrate group is occupying the uh, yeah the nitrate group is occupying the chloro group that's why here we are getting silver chloride okay silver chloride as a precipitate and barium nitrate solution this is aqueous this is also aqueous this is also aqueous this is precipitate so white precipitate so in this way we can in this way we can study the different types of chemical reactions and we can gather the different types of information from the chemical reaction or in the form of chemical equation. So the next part of the discussion is rate of chemical reactions. The word rate here we mean uh, the speed or the velocity with which the reaction reaction gets completed take these examples random examples I am going to give you digestion of food rusting of iron Rusting of iron, then uh, standardization, standardization of oxalic acid, standardization of oxalic acid, reaction, reaction of metal with the dilute acid reaction of metal with the concentrated acid 
fermentation process. What you are noticing in all these cases, fermentation process is a slow process. Metal reacts with constant acid very fast. Metals reacts with dilute acids very slow. Or you can say slow reactions. You can say slow. Standardization of oxalic acid, moderate reactions. Moderate reactions, rusting of iron and digestion of food, very, very slow reactions. Slow reactions. If you take digestion of food in particular, if you are taking digestion of food, whatever the food we consume, that food is in the form of complex carbohydrates. These carbohydrates with the, the various enzymes which are present in our body, they are broken down into the simpler substances in the form of proteins and amino acids and these proteins and amino acids they are absorbed into our body for this absorption to take place in our body it requires an amount of metabolism and catabolism and it's a time consuming process that's the reason the digestion of food which we take it takes a lot of time minimum two or three hours of time because that's how the metabolism and the catabolism works in our body that's why we can say the digestion of food is absolutely a very slow process if you go for rusting of iron Yes, rusting of iron also is a very slow process because when the water which is coming in contact with the surface of a metal, rusting of iron means iron is a metal, iron has a lot of affinity towards the water and if water contains any dissolved salts in it, these salts also they try to form a layer on the surface of the metal and slowly chemical interaction takes place between the iron and the other metals which are present in water and as a result of that you find that the color of the iron slowly starts changing it becomes the reddish brown color sometimes because of rusting or sometimes it becomes a pale green color all these color changes on the surface of iron can be indicated by the rusting of iron standardization of oxalic acid is something like it's a typical reaction you know the formula of oxalic acid h2c2o4 plus h2so4 plus kmno4 for example, if you take, uh, we can take here K2SO4 plus MnSO4 plus carbon dioxide plus water. Carbon dioxide plus water. If you take, uh, I think, uh, if you are taking 5 here, then here I am taking 10. And here if I am taking 2 over here, then I am going to take 2 over here already number of sulfates you can see number of hydrogens if you take 5 to 10 5 to 10 number of sulfates we have 3 so I think if I take 3 over here sulfates are already, already balanced so here number of hydrogens 10 and plus 5 to 10 and 3 to 6 16 oxygens so I think if I am going to take 8 uh, hydrogens there as molar coefficients 5 3 2 2, 10 and 8. I think maybe the reaction is already balanced because we have 2 potassiums and 2 potassiums. We have uh, 2 manganese and 2 manganese. We have 3 sulfates, 1 sulfate here and another 2 into sulfate. 3 sulfates are balanced. There are 2 carbons. Yeah, there are sorry, there are 10 carbons. You can take 10 carbons. You have 16 hydrogen, 16 hydrogens are balanced. 5 fours are 20 oxygens. 5 fours are 20 and 20 plus for 2 fours are 8 oxygens, 28 oxygens. So this is 20, 10 twos are 20 oxygens and another 8 oxygens. So the entire reaction is getting balanced. So here what is happening here is you take 20 ml, this is oxalic acid. H2C2O4 is the oxalic acid and uh, this is sulfuric acid. This is potassium permanganate 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 potassium permanganate and this is manganese 
mangala sulfate so this reaction to take place so here this we take 20 ml and uh, this also we take 20 ml and uh, both this 20 plus 20 it is this 20 ml and 20 ml we just titrate with k 4 and that will result in the formation of manganese sulfate and it will take half an hour or 45 minutes of time the temperature operates at around 80 degrees centigrade so this is a perfect example this is a perfect example of moderate reactions and reaction of metal with dilute acids this is this is not a new reaction i think i can just show you here and if you take very simple example i'm going to give you suppose zinc if it is react zinc solid if it is reacting with hcl which is dilute immediately you can find that of course you get zinc chloride zinc chloride you are going to get aqueous plus uh, h2 gas is liberated the evolution of hydrogen gas is very slow that's because the acid is dilute but the same reaction if you carry out with the say zinc solid if you're carrying it out with the hcl concentrated then you find that immediately c1 c conch concentrated yes here you are going to get zinc chloride no doubt about it zinc chloride you are going to get the thing is here um, evolution of course aqueous zinc chloride salt is evolved uh, plus h2 gas because the acid is concentrated the acid is concentrated the reaction becomes very fast here the acid is dilute that's why the reaction becomes very slow in this way we can simply differentiate between the very slow reaction we can simply differentiate between very slow reaction or fast reaction sometimes you can say simply slow and fast reaction instead of using very just we can say slow reaction and fast reactions so today we would like to understand this topic in a very simple manner by selecting some random examples say for example i am just giving you some examples like uh, iron solid plus h2o h2o liquid gives rise to fe2o3 fe2o3 solid plus uh, h2 gas say how do you balance this uh, equation that is i am underlining here here also I am underlining and here also I am underlining so what we can do here is like uh, here we can see that the number of hydrogens are 2 and uh, here the number of hydrogens are 2 uh, and here the number of hydrogens are 2 number of oxygens are 3 here we have only one oxygen so the first thing what I am going to do is I am going to mark 3 I am going to place a molar coefficient 3 besides water this 3 is not only balancing the number of oxygens, it is also balancing the number of hydrogens. So here by marking 3 as a molar coefficient beside water, you are increasing the number of hydrogens from 2 to 6. But here we have only 2 hydrogens, so mark 3 here as a molar coefficient. So what you are noticing here, that means as of now, the number of hydrogens are balanced, 3 to the 6 hydrogens and 3 to the 6 hydrogens, 3 oxygens and 3, 3 oxygens. We have 2 irons, but you have only 1 iron, so therefore this is how the irons are getting balanced and the entire reaction is getting balanced take one more example that is take one more example that is this is the first one go for second one suppose i am taking c6 h6 uh, benzene that is liquid plus oxygen gas gives rise to gives rise to uh, that is carbon dioxide gas plus water plus water liquid so here what i can do is just as how we have done in the earlier cases i am marking here as one unknown molar coefficient unknown molar coefficient unknown molar coefficient and unknown molar coefficient in the above reaction in the above reaction for irons already they are balanced so one you place it here that the reaction is going to get balanced no problem that's already balanced now if you go to the second part of the reaction that is here you are finding that there are in in benzene of course this is benzene this is benzene in this benzene we have six carbons here we have only one carbon because there are six carbons i am going to place the molar coefficient six besides carbon dioxide thereby here you are finding that the number of hydrogens are uh, six but here we have only 
two hydrogens so that's why mark three here the number of hydrogens are balanced and here you have three oxygens and here we have six to twelve oxygens six to the twelve oxygens plus three oxygens total fifteen oxygens are there and here we have two oxygens either you can take seven point five either you can take seven point five moles or the seven point five you can write it as fifteen by two if you multiply the oxygen with 15 by 2 moles then this 15 by 2 is nothing but 7.5 7.5 into 2 is again nothing but 15 oxygens so therefore here you are finding that the number of carbons are balanced number of carbons 6 carbons number of hydrogens 6 hydrogens 6 to 12 plus 3 15 oxygens oxygens are balanced everything is balanced so once one mole of benzene so mark it here as one the reaction is going to get balanced this is one kind of a reaction where you can easily understand how the chemical reaction is getting balanced look at this go for the next part of the reaction suppose sometimes a situation arises like this ammonia ammonia gas plus chlorine this is ammonia is in excess it gives ammonium chloride ammonium chloride solid plus nitrogen gas what if what if uh, you are taking how to balance the equation so to express the molar coefficient mark here one molar coefficient mark here one molar coefficient here you mark a molar coefficient and here also you mark a molar coefficient so what you are noticing here is suppose because we have because already is here one nitrogen and one nitrogen one nitrogen one nitrogen three hydrogens four hydrogens we have two chlorines one chlorine we have total number of nitrogens three are there we have total number of nitrogens three are there four is the even number four hydrogens are the even number because already nitrogens are uh, three so you, there is no use of placing uh, four here uh, four means i am doubling the four with eight suppose if i am taking eight moles of ammonia say for example hit and trial if there is no concept involved in the balancing of complex reactions you have to use uh, hit and trial that is guess method the guess should be so quick that you have to check the number of hydrogens on the product side and number of nitrogens on the on the product side number of hydrogens are 4 4 is even number of nitrogens are 3 3 is odd but 4 if you mark it as 4 you could be you could not be balancing either nitrogens or hydrogens that's why better you go for higher even number the higher even number is 8 if it is 8 then you have 8 nitrogens and 24 uh, hydrogens 8 nitrogens and 24 hydrogens so 8 nitrogens means what i'm going to do here is i think i can take over here because 24 hydrogens means you have 4 so i am marking here 6 by marking 6 you're not only balancing the number of hydrogens you're not only balancing the number of uh, hydrogens you're also balancing the number of nitrogens only thing is that you have to balance the number of chlorines so mark it here as 3 this is one way of balancing the chemical equation so this is one of the typical examples so likewise one more last example i would like to give you one more last example suppose for example you are taking uh, say for example you are taking zinc solid reacts with h2so4 aqueous concentrated giving rise to zinc sulfate aqueous plus sulfur dioxide gas plus h2o liquid so you have to balance this equation if you want to balance this equation underline the molar coefficient underline the molar coefficient underline the molar coefficient molar coefficient and molar coefficient so what we can do here is like uh, we have two sulfurs are there first thing is i'm guessing with two sulfurs suppose if i'm taking two over here by chance if i'm taking two over here the number of oxygens are eight we have two sulfurs and number of hydrogens are four so blindly suppose if i am going to place two here yes number of hydrogens are balanced two twos are four hydrogens are balanced then two sulfurs are already balanced then we have two fours are eight oxygens yes four oxygens plus four oxygens plus two oxygens plus two oxygens yes eight oxygens balanced and one zinc solid is balanced so therefore i'm going to mark it as 
1 as a molar coefficient. So, we can easily balance the given chemical equations or chemical reactions by using little bit of common sense, little bit of awareness in the reaction, little bit of awareness of different groups which are involved in the chemical reaction, little bit of practice can make you to balance any type of given chemical equation in your own terms. As, a, as of such, when you are balancing the chemical equation, there is no there is no need for you for us to use any particular method. It is better always use the hit and trial method and always maintain the time management when you are trying to balance the given chemical equation. So, here because it is zinc is only one mole, one zinc atom is there. So, here I am going to take one. So, the entire reaction is balanced. So, the next part of the discussion is that is energy changes. energy changes taking place in a energy changes taking place in a given chemical chemical reactions so when you say energy changes here energy changes of energy energy changes are made up of um, we can say thermal decompositions is one type of energy change thermal decomposition is one type of energy changes then uh, that is exothermic exothermic changes exothermic reactions exothermic reactions endothermic reactions endothermic reactions these are the three reactions where we can utilize and we can discuss so here if you take for example if you are taking thermal decomposition take CaCO3 solid CaCO3 solid this is limestone upon heating you heat it it gives calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide gas. Mind you, this is limestone, limestone, and this is quicklime. Limestone and quicklime. So you, that means you are supplying heat here. That means the limestone in the form of calcium carbonate it is getting decomposed to give one single compound. One single compound upon heating, it is able to give two. Uh, products one product is calcium oxide otherwise we call it as quicklime and also the carbon dioxide gas evolved this is one type of uh, thermal decomposition also you can take one more example that is ammonium nitrate is a solid ammonium nitrate is a solid upon heating you heat it so applying the heat so you get n2o gas plus h2o liquid n2o gas is nitrous oxide otherwise also called laughing gas otherwise also called laughing gas and this is solid ammonium nitrate is solid likewise you can take plenty of examples you can take lead nitrate is a solid you heat it if you heat you get lead monoxide which is a solid nitrogen dioxide which is a gas and also a small amount of oxygen gas is also evolved this is thermal decomposition so balance the equation if you want to balance the equation i think i suppose already we have uh, suppose if i am taking two over here there is no use so suppose if i am starting over here with two if i am placing this as a molar coefficient as two and lead nitrate there are two leads so i am just placing two as a molar coefficient besides lead oxide that is plumbus oxide this is plumbus plumbus oxide plumbus oxide or lead monoxide there are two nitrogens so take two over here number of oxygens 3 to 6 6 to 12 so already we have 2 to 4 oxygens plus 2 oxygens 6 oxygens then i think if i am going to place 3 over here then the entire number of oxygens are going to get balanced are going to get balanced that is you can see here that is two moles of lead nitrate upon heating gives 
2 moles of lead monoxide, 2 moles of nitrogen dioxide and 3 moles of oxygen. So, these three are the best examples of how the thermal decomposition takes place. So, this, is, this comes under thermal, thermal decomposition. thermal decomposition first example second example and third example so this is lead nitrate this is a third example lead nitrate so the next part of the discussion in thermal decomposition is second category in thermal decomposition b in thermal decomposition in thermal decomposition one more category that is uh, one more the best example in this is electrolytic 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 decomposition electrolytic decomposition if you go for electrolytic decomposition what do you mean by this electrolytic decomposition this means that you are subjecting electrolysis in other words electrolysis of acidulated acidulated water electrolysis of acidulated water using inert using inert inert electrodes that's because why we say acidulated water pure water is a bad electrolytic conductor pure water is a bad electrolytic conductor so to improve its conducting nature we need to add small amount of acid so water when it is mixed with water liquid when it is mixed with H2SO4 in small amounts small amounts this turns to acidulated water electrolytic conductor good electrolytic conductor so what is happening here I am just drawing one small diagram here just for understanding purpose what I am doing here is I am just taking one small electrolytic vessel uh, and I am just uh, releasing two inert electrodes uh, through the platinum wires and the platinum plates and we are connecting it to the conducting external circuit this is the power source battery and one will act as anode A for anode and B for cathode C for cathode sorry C for cathode C for cathode A for anode anode and this is cathode cathode electrode and here in this we are going to fill the electrolytic solution H2O that is acidulated H2O you find that what is the reaction mechanism taking place during the electrolysis and this is nothing but electrolysis taking place electrolysis taking place so what is happening here is take the reaction mechanism at anode <coughs> at anode you can take that is two molecules of H2O liquid gives rise to 4H plus ions plus oxygen gas plus 4 electrons. De-electronation takes place. De-electronation takes place. This is oxidation. At cathode, at cathode, at cathode, that is H2O, 4 molecules of H2O liquid plus 4 electrons gives you that is 4 OH minus ions plus 2 moles of H2 gas is evolved. So, this is first equation and this is second equation. So, when you add both these equations you are going to get this 4 electrons and 4 electrons they get cancelled this is reduction reduction and here 4 plus 2 6 water molecules in the liquid state they give 4 H plus ions plus 4 
OH minus ions plus O2 gas plus 2H2 gas or you can write the same reaction as or because we have 4H plus ions and 4H2O this 4H plus ions and 4H2O can be written as this 4H plus ions and 4H2O I'll just write this as this equation this I'll write it as 6H2O minus 4H2O gives rise to uh, O2 gas plus uh, 2 moles of H2 gas. This also means that this 4 this 4H2O 6H2O minus 4H2O ultimately it will result in that is 2H2O liquid 2H2O liquid gives rise to gives rise to 2H2 gas plus O2 gas. So, this completes the electrolytic process of water. This completes the this completes the electrolytic decomposition of water. This completes the electrolytic decomposition of water. So, here I am just marking all the separations very clearly with a positive sign, no confusion. So, very important reaction where in which finally we are getting the thermally decomposed, electrolytically decomposed water molecules. They are giving 2 moles of hydrogen gas and 1 mole of oxygen gas and these are the anodic reactions and these are the cathodic reactions and this is the net equation which you have to understand. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.